Дуру, дуру, салам, как вы поживаете? Мне очень хорошо. Ну, хорошо. Aftermath. So, Brian Ortega versus Korean Zombie. What do I think now that the fight is over? Well, I think that this is what happens when Brazilian guys, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guys, realize that their Jiu-Jitsu doesn't matter if you can't get there. And so you got to cut the distance, right? Well, why, why let the other guy be good at striking? Why let the other guy be good at striking? Why let the Sambo guys, why let the, why let the guys that have, you know, Muay Thai, why let those guys beat on you and then take it to the ground and try to strangle them or choke them or submit them? Why is it that the ego is so fixated around making someone tap? This is what happens when someone replaces the macho need to show Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu being superior on the ground or superior fighting form and then just gets their game up. Because Brian Ortega took his game from about chill to championship caliber. He, I don't know if he's going to be a champion. I'm not real familiar with that weight class. I'm not. But the lower you go, the more technically sound the guys are, the better the skills are. The, the more well-rounded the guys are. The, the heavier you weigh, the, the bigger the knockout pop is. The more violent the finishes are, you know, the less it goes to the judges. So, yes, I am a big fan of Brian Ortega. Absolutely. I thought that he did a magnificent job. The only thing that I would say is why in the late rounds would you still strike with a guy? Why not take it to the ground and keep it out of the judge's hands? Because, and this is just a, a strategy thing. Why give a guy who is called Korean zombie because he can take a bunch of abuse and just needs one right hand why give him the opportunity to take a bunch of abuse and then just give one right hand so yeah so Brian Ortega showed his ability to um, to expand his game he was using strikes on um, from platforms that I was just like wow that's good for a striking guy let alone somebody whose forte is next level jiu-jitsu. His Brazilian jiu-jitsu is insane. I don't, I don't, like, for jiu-jitsu guys, he is next level. You know, not, not even necessarily next level for the, for the UFC. You know, his, his neck control game, his standing jiu-jitsu his standing grappling is, is amazing. So the only thing, again, that I would say would be in the late rounds, dude, take you to the ground. Don't let that, don't let the Korean zombie do what he do. But that's just nitpicking. That's just nitpicking because Brian Ortega, he... He controlled the fight more or less. There were times where, you know, the zombie could do what the zombie do. Um, but, yeah, the elbows, that was a new wrinkle. That was amazing. Um, you know, he still stands a little flat-footed. Is that going to hurt him on the title shots? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It seems like he his guard play is awesome and his guillotine play is awesome his standing grappling is awesome so he's kind of trying to encourage somebody to shoot against him it seems like that is part of his game but now that he can strike that well you know i i want to see a little more snap on the on the i'm this is just nitpicky but i want to see driving through the target i want to see a little more snap because it's it's heavy it's 
he's hitting the guy. He's hitting the guy like he's hitting a punching bag. He's not striking through. And he's, you know, but that might be, he doesn't want to swing for defenses and, and upset his balance or upset his forward. I, I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah, I'm definitely a fan of Brian Ortega. Korean Zombie looks like he's just old. Father Time's undefeated. Father Time is undefeated. <laughs> so, um, yeah, really proud of Brian Ortega. Shaved his head. That was a kind of a, you know, it was a good metaphor. It was like, I'm going to shed my old skin and come in as a new fighter. Um, big fan of it. He donated his hair. Big fan of it. Um, you know, wish I had some hair. Can't donate mine. You ain't getting this. You ain't getting it. People tell me all the time, ask me to shave. And I'm like, yeah, well, I ain't cutting my tattoos off either, am I? So, no. God gave me this beard. It's like my belly button. I don't know what it does no more, but it's part of me. How connected am I? to my beard, it's on my face. It's on my face, that's how connected I am to. Anyway, so, um, Brian Ortega, yeah. The aftermath was that Brian Ortega is legit. He's very legit, um, he angled Korean Zombie very well. Korean Zombie just, he didn't look like Korean Zombie, and there was two reasons. One, Father Time's undefeated. He just didn't have the same zest and speed, and he just didn't. Number two, Brian Ortega. Brian Ortega took a lot of what Korean Zombie does well away from him, and that was, he, he was just a bigger dude. He was a bigger dude that had more length. You know, it, if he's this much bigger than everybody else, Brian Ortega's going to fly through this division. Um, can he be a two-division guy? I don't know. I don't know if he if his striking just keeps better and better, he could easily be a two division guy. So that's the aftermath. That's what I think. Khoda. Khoda Hafiz.